Oh, I think this might just be the best day at work ever. In this video, the comparisons continue between the Citroen DS and the Rover P6. If you haven't seen the previous video yet, go and check that out now, in which we take a close look around these cars. But otherwise, it's time to go for a drive. And it's going to be Citroen first. Now, obviously, before we can take the D for a drive, it needs to rise up. So I'll get you in position so you can watch her and lift herself up. So here we are in the DS, into first gear. And straight away you can hear this is not a performance orientated car. This is the D Special, this is the base model. Uh, it's got the lowest state of tune, a 98 brake horsepower I think, on this slightly later D Super. Um, at 5,250 RPM. Uh, so it's given away a lot to the V8-powered rover ahead of us. Um, but it's probably not too dissimilar to a 2000 SC. We've got a bit of noise from the rear brakes, which are drum. Um, but that might go away with some mileage. Like I said, I have to modulate my pressure on the rubber mushroom on the floor. And that's what makes the difference. Uh, a quick point, in the previous video I said this mirror was annoying and in the way. It's actually mounted too high. Someone's replaced the windscreen at some point. It should be lower. That's kind of what this recess is for here, I think. Um, so that's not completely standard, as with many older cars. Things change um, as, as you get older. Uh, oh, handbrake back off again, having just put it on. It is a very torquey engine. Lovely column gear change. That is one of the best I've ever encountered. So I can quickly get into top here we are at just over 50 kilometers an hour it's about 30 miles an hour might even do the window up because I've got fresh air vents so I don't need quite so much window space open but um, already I can feel the car just floating along over the bumps and that makes it very relaxing of course the seat is so soft so I've got suspension even between my buttocks and the floor of the car so uh, it feels very very soft now we're going to go and try some different roads. We're following the P6 because um, we're going to drive down a road which is really going to test the suspension of both cars and uh, we'll see um, just what they're like over it. Uh, we drove along the road earlier in a Subaru Forester and that was most unpleasant. Uh, That's what I love about these old cars, that they have these soft cosseting rides. How did we get away from this? Because, as we'll see, it's not like either car has bad handling because it has soft suspension. They managed to handle well despite having soft suspension, which proves it is possible. Jaguar also experts at it. Peugeot, Renault, also very good at a time at doing ride and handling. So it annoys me that we seem to have forgotten those times. Better sneak in a wiper test. Uh, I think it's pull for the wash. There we go. And there's the wipers. Good overlap, no triangle of doom here. Thank you very much. Uh, earlier D's had clap hand wipers, but they changed fairly early on um, to um, a system like this. The wipers always park in front of the driver, so on a left hand drive the pattern would be the other way. Uh, the thinking I think is that these, this design takes the water away from the driver. That corner isn't particularly swept, but that corner wraps right round, so that's not so much of a problem. I'm in fourth gear here, just bimbling along. Uh, it's strange, the engine just doesn't really match the characteristics of the rest of the car. Ooh, 100 kilometers an hour, let's open her up, see if we can stick with the P6.
Oh, it really smooths out at speed actually. We're up to 90 kilometers an hour and uh, yes, yeah, sings along very sweetly. That's 3,000 revs though, so by this stage the um, DS models, the 21 and um, later the 23 had a 5 speed gearbox which allowed it to be much more relaxing at speed. It's worth remembering this is the base model effectively. But we still get power steering, we still get um, those forceful brakes. Um, so it's not like we're giving too much away really. Nice Holden Commodore there. And there we go, we're cruising along at 100 kilometers an hour. That's about 60 miles an hour. And it's um, fine actually. If I do my window up entirely, there's really not too much wind noise despite the frameless doors. Something else that's better than the Subaru Forester. Oh dear. But yeah, we're just floating really. It's majestically comfortable. I should have adjusted this head restraint. That's not quite so ideal. But then I can kind of rest on it. And you wouldn't normally rest your head on a headrest or restraint while driving along in a double car because you're bouncing your head along. But this is lovely. And all these controls, the major controls, fall nice and easily to hand. Um, so I can um, operate the lights this side, indicators and wipers this side. It's the start of this sort of logical um, stalk layout and it works very nicely. The stalks work very well actually. Right, coming up to a roundabout, so I'm in fourth at the moment. I've got to go back up for third. I could probably stay in fourth to be honest, but we'll go for third anyway. And we'll pitch her into the roundabout. Whoa! Yeah, she does roll a bit, but it's not uncomfortable. It, I don't think it's quite on 2CV levels. But yeah, mostly what you get is just the sheer comfort. Now, personally, I think the manuals are easier to drive than the semi-automatics, which have this strange lever sprouting from the um, dashboard. Um, they are most peculiar to drive. Maybe one day I'll do a video on one of those. But uh, it's kind of weird because you move the lever, but you've got to lift off the gas or throttle. Um, sorry, I'm sinking into the local dialect already. And one other th quick thing I will say, the owner's fitted a water temperature gauge down here. So the coolant is apparently at 63 degrees at the moment. I don't know where that's measuring, but because um, Otherwise, I've only got a light. And what I thought was a low fluid level is actually low pressure. So it warns you when the pressure's losing, uh, the system's losing pressure. So if you were suffering enormous um, failure of your hydraulics, it would be nice to know. I mean, you tend to notice because the steering is the first thing to go, that becomes very, very heavy. And if that happens, that usually means you've probably only got a couple of presses on the brake pedal before everything starts going very wrong. This one has a slight fault on the hydraulics at the moment. When she rises up, she over-rises at the front and goes up to the intermediate height position and you have to force her to drop back down. But uh, like I say, old cars all have their charms. Here we go then. Get the suspension working out. It's not a very high speed limit down here, but uh, oh yeah, I mean the car is pitching around, but it's pitching around gently. Um, so you can kind of feel the suspension working, but uh, it doesn't jar you. And the thing about these cars, the faster you go, and we're slightly limited by speed limit here, the better it gets. They get more floaty um, as you speed up. The hydraulics really absorb the worst and that's because they were designed in France and France had terrible roads for a time. On account of being so huge and having so few people in it. The DS is a little tricky to place, I cannot see that wing and the front end is much wider than the rear um, for reasons of aerodynamics largely. Although despite that the DS is not a very aerodynamic car, this big upright windscreen stops it being quite as streamlined as you might expect. The steering is um, very devoid of feel. Can't really feel what the front end is doing 
at all. Um, but um, being rack and pinion is very direct and uh, she doesn't wander around. So you can place the car, it just takes a while to get your confidence and you've got to be a bit smooth with your inputs or it starts getting a bit, yeah, twitchy and that's not good. But um, we're gonna pull over somewhere along here. Not there, that's someone's driveway. And uh, we'll, we'll see how the Rover compares. Incidentally, we've got a Toyota Land Cruiser there. Um, it's got a pantograph rear wiper, but only on the passenger side. It's got two rear wipers, only one of which is pantograph to force it round in a tight arc. But um, that's not why we're here. We're here to compare the DS with the P6. And oh my gosh, um, the all disc brakes on the P6 require more of a shove. And because it's got power steering, um, much skinnier steering wheel and much smaller steering wheel than the um, regular uh, P6s. Oh, but it rides beautifully. So in many ways, um, is the P6 just as good? I think it is. Now, one problem with these P6s is, is this gearbox. Uh, it wasn't really up to the job. Um, it's a slightly beefed up version of Rover's own four-speed gearbox and uh, it was a bit of a weak point. Just also discovered I've got now got somewhere for my clutch foot to go. In the DS I didn't. Uh, but yeah, here we go. The suspension is really starting to work now. Um, I turned stabilisation on, on the camera so you're probably not getting the full effect. The camera is no doubt smoothing this out but uh, yeah, the suspension is working hard. Very long travel suspension on both cars. Um, obviously the DS has a few party tricks and I'm gonna do a separate video looking at some of those party tricks because otherwise this video is gonna be about 600 hours long and I don't think we've got time for that. I'm having to turn the wheel more in this uh, and again, there's not really much um, feedback. It's a steering box rather than rack opinion on this so it's a little more vague. But um, yeah, again, we're smoothing out the worst of these bumps quite nicely. Absolutely effortless driving along. This engine is so smooth. Uh, it really is remarkably smooth. Um, I think it must have a different exhaust to my Series 1 V8 because that had a proper mischievous burble about it at all times. This is, this sounds like the very height of refinement. I can barely tell the engine's running. But uh, I know from personal experience, you really can lean on these cars. You can get them um, uh, handling um, very nicely indeed. You just throw them into bends and uh, very good suspension geometry and uh, that long travel means uh, it takes a lot to upset a P6 in the bends. Here comes a big bump, mid-bend. What bump? Just straight over it. Wonderful. Also interesting to be following a DS down the road. It's like you're following Darth Vader. But the main difference is, um, oh yeah, whoa, whoa, still in a residential zone. Uh, you put your foot down, there is um, torque aplenty. Uh, the DS has torque um, in that lovely low running manner of um, that design of engine. Um, but this has um, a bit more punch to it. And, uh, Obviously, I, I need to do a wiper test to see how that compares. Uh, so I think it's a push for wash. Oh, that doesn't seem to work. No, we're not getting any screen wash, unfortunately. Oh well, let's check the wiper pattern. Very good. So, um, got a corner of disappointment here, but very good overlap. No triangle of doom. So that's all good. I'm a huge fan of the P6. Perhaps because I'm a huge fan of Citroëns, and really this is the British Citroën. Uh, when you look at the side lights, by the way, and we'll do some footage of those, don't you worry, they've got little telltales on top, so you can see that the side lights are on. They're completely unnecessary, but rather nice touch, which I think adds some um, design um, 
um, pleasantness, shall we say. Um, the DS is flashing an indicator trumpet. We are going to go right. There's a coach coming, so we're going to have to get a shift on. That's smooth. It's actually a bit too smooth. I'd like a bit more V8 verbal myself, but um, it's certainly refined. And these later British Leyland built um, Rover P6s weren't always the best for quality. Now this is still pretty good. These cars may share um, uh, the, a certain something in the design, the engineering, very much the DS influenced the Rover, but in terms of actual driving experience, I think the two are very different. Uh, I think the P6 actually feels a little more composed. The DS can feel a little too floaty for some people. Uh, I think the P6 gets the balance better and the steering is a little more normal. It's, it's easier for someone who's not driven an older car to jump into a P6 and just drive it and enjoy it. Uh, a DS with those super sharp brakes and the strange steering, the floaty suspension, takes a bit more getting used to. But we'll see if we can find somewhere where we can stretch this car's legs a little more. different response in terms of power. I'm going to do my window up to make things a little more peaceful. Oh, there's a bit more wind noise in the P6. Make sure that's up fully. But, you know, again, we can just corner at whatever speed you like, really. There's a fair bit of road noise, but that's not unusual um, in the Antipodes, as I've been discovering in New Zealand as well. There we go, we can get up to a hundred now. Yeah, I'm not even giving that half throttle. There's a um, power in reserve. Watch the DS. Oh yeah, there we go, floating over the same bump. Felt a little uneven. I wonder if there's a slightly worn damper. Um, but uh, yeah, this is proof with both cars, but um, Old cars needn't just potter around to local shows. You can go cruising in these quite happily. But we're, we're doing 100 kilometers an hour at two and a half thousand revs. So that's 500 revs lower than the D. And um, definitely feel I'm not having to have my foot flat to the floor all the time. That is a lot of wind noise. Can I get rid of it by opening the quarter line, which I do with this knob here? Yes, I can. There we go, that's clever. A bit more ventilation. It's a rotating knob to work in the quarter lights on the Series 2s, which I really like. Which you would obviously do so you can um, drop one cigar ash straight out the window. I think that's the whole point of a quarter light. Basically, this is what both cars were built to do. It's just waft along in comfort. Now, unfortunately, Rover would never get a chance to shine like this again and many people regard this as the last proper Rover because of that. Uh, the um, SD1 was much simplified, McPherson struck front suspension, a live axle at the back on coil springs. But it's worth remembering, both this car and the SD1 were engineered by Sven King and Sven King um, he knew what he was doing, so the SD1 is still a fine driving car because of Spain King. He, was, he had his hands forced, he, was, he had to cut costs. The unique suspension on this Rover P6 was very costly to produce and design and engineer. So uh, things had to be very different for the SD1. And Spain King proved how capable he was by meeting that strict requirement. on about quarter throttle here chasing this um, P6 down the road nice snickety gear lever 
very commanding driving position, which is odd given how low the P6 seems. But uh, by jolly, this has been a fun test. Oh, I think this might just be the best day at work ever. Wow. But still, for me, this is peak Rover. The P4s are very classy, the P5s added a bit of muscle, um, but the P6 really was the final flowering. This was Rover proving what engineering excellence it had. Sadly, also proving that engineering excellence does not um, create profit. Much the same as the Citroen DS, uh, which was really an advertising program for Michelin. Michelin tyres were own Citroen at the time. So, uh, yeah, just entirely different times. And for that reason, uh, I'm not sure it's entirely possible to decide which of these cars is best. But let's not jump ahead. Let's park up and uh, I shall form my conclusions. Well, that is a head-to-head -head I've wanted to do for a very long time, purely because you've got those design similarities in that basic unit structure. Um, but yeah, they end up being very different cars to drive, um, uh, but very enjoyable. Uh, really, I don't think there are any cars that drive similar to either of them. They don't drive the same as each other. Uh, they're just um, deliciously different, uh, which is a better time all round for everyone, I think. Uh, different is good. So I shall say, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget you can head to the Hubnut store and buy Hubnut goodies and uh, various support options can be found there also. I look forward to seeing you in a future video. Farewell.